1973, Jules Verne wrote Around the World in 80 Days. Based on the idea that new technology creates new possibilities. Written at a tipping point in mobility when horse and carriage were being replaced by fossil fuels. Now we're at a new tipping point towards sustainable mobility. But many are skeptic that sustainable and electric vehicles can ever become mainstream. People say uh, they have limited range, hydrogen isn't safe, there is no infrastructure. You probably even agree. But 140 years ago, the development of mobility went through the exact same process. For example, there were no petrol stations. There was no infrastructure. Only a few were able to look past the limitations and see the new uh, opportunities. They took it as an exciting new challenge. It's the stories of these pioneers that became legends that still excite and inspire us. They've pushed mobility to where we are now. And in this pioneering spirit, we created 80 Day Race. A race around the world, but this time without combustion engines. Only zero emission vehicles are allowed. And when we first started developing this idea, we came across our fair share of skeptics. Uh, can't be done. Around the world, way too ambitious. Why not start with a small trip in Europe? But what is a challenge if all is easy and the solution is obvious? It's the unknown that excites us and creates the stories that will be remembered. So, stubborn as I am, I stuck with the idea. And I managed to excite more and more people. Even my childhood hero, Hubert Auriol, a three-time winner and ten years the director of the Paris to Dakar rally didn't have to think at all when I approached him. He believes the world can be clean and exciting. Eric Lindbergh, the grandson of Charles Lindbergh, is recreating some of his grandfather's flights, this time with sustainable airplanes. He became one of the many 80-day race ambassadors. And the city of Paris and its mayor, Anne Hidalgo, jumped at the opportunity to host the start of the race, so we'll start and finish the race under the Eiffel Tower. A National Geographic Society, a society born out of the idea of care for the planet and exploration, has agreed to broadcast a documentary series globally. And over two dozen teams have expressed their interest to race in this competition, ranging from car manufacturers to enthusiastic privateers. We're not the first to go around the world in 80 days with only sustainable vehicles. Our ambassador, Louis Palmer, already did this trip in 2010. And even a student group from Eindhoven took a liking to our plans and have just done their own world tour. There's one big difference. 80 Day Race is not an individual adventure. It's a global competition. It's not my story. It's our story. My name is Frank Manders, and I firmly believe that in order to accelerate to a sustainable future, we shouldn't focus on what can't be done. We should embrace the new challenges, push the boundaries of the unknown, and show what can be done. Thank you. <laughs>